situation and a bit of a paradox that you want to depoliticize institutions of learning on one hand, and you want to engage politicians, especially those who are in power, to influence change in how education is delivered in our institutions. Don't you think that's a bit of a paradox? Because I see a situation where you want more and more uh, rapport or engagement with the state, especially, not the opposition where we are now, but where we were previously, where our friends are now. And that is what you'd like to be enhanced. So if we're going to let you go free, and as government or opposition, we say, no, leave them away from politics, how then do we engage? So I think this is the difficulty uh, you may find yourselves in, and this is the difficulty probably the colleagues who are running government are finding themselves in. Because one minute you'll be saying, no, the cost of living is too high. That is a political statement. And the one who can tell whether the cost of living is too high is a student, because he's coming from a home. He's coming from the community. He knows the cost of living because he feels it. So if you do that, to me, who is sitting in state house, to me, who is the opposition as president, I see that's a political statement. And depending on how favorable it, it is to my cause, I will encourage you. <laughs> so if I see it as smacking of animosity, and desirous of bringing me down now. Say, he's being too political, can you deal with him? So, so you see what I'm talking about. This is the biggest challenge you face as students, including uh, when you talk about freedoms. Yes, you are free. They'll give you freedom, and I think I'm an advocate for freedom. But at the end of the day, you find that uh, when you freely speak on politics and you support me, I'll say, no, you're not being political. But when you freely speak on politics and you injure my status or my situation or my vision or my ambition, I say, no, that's being too political. You're not supposed to be political. It becomes a problem. But your findings are genuine, legitimate, and I can only say that let's find a way of airing them so that we all get to know. And I'm surprised that uh, you are craving for student participation in decision making at the level of the institution. I've heard of schools here in Zambia where they'll pick a student a learner from grade four, grade five, grade six classes, and say, you sit with the teachers and you listen to them and they make certain decisions so that you're able to tell them what they're thinking of your class. They call them counselors or senators and some schools and so on. It's happening. And those of you who go to these schools, which I'm a co-elitist, that was very common. But I don't know whether it's happening at Shugo Primary School in Chimwemwe. <laughs> but these, these are things which we should be innovative and creative and be ready to say, look, this is a novel situation. It has never happened. And like you have said in your slogan, nothing about us without us is true. Because you'll be able to know Miller allowances. Oh, Miller allowances, you pro proclaim that you have increased Miller allowances, but it's not enough. Then they will tell you, no, it's also not enough where the resources are coming from, the resources envelope. How do we begin increasing your uh, budgetary requirements for Miller allowances at the same time when the envelope is depleting? Then you may point out that, why don't you cut down on your trips, sir? <laughs> that, that kind of thing, because that's what comes out of dialogue. So, so I think that uh, I don't want to, 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 to take the, the positives out of this. Uh, from what you have said, there's a lot of positivity, and I can only pray that those in power now want to listen to you, because without your support, nothing will work. Just the other day, I said something about free education. I'm a product of free education myself. And free education meant I used to get books from school. Uh, I used to, to get, even, even meals, we used to get meals given to us, uh, milk and some, some, some biscuits started at break and so on. That is true. But the resources may not be there. The question is, if the resources are not there for the government, the government should begin revisiting uh, its budgetary allocation and say which are the priority areas. And for me, education should be a bigger chunk of the budget. And the, of course, there are competing needs, uh, the security, the health, there is all these things coming through. But unless we begin engaging students, we will have a difficulty because we think students are unruly, they, they, they are being influenced by the political forces, they are against us and so on. But I would like to just speak one, one little thing. In the last two and a half years that I've been out of office, uh, there has been what has been introduced as free education in Zambia. And just the other day, I said, I'm bemoaning the quality of pre-education. Well, I saw little children clustered in a room like sardines and so on. That came after I spoke. But uh, my worry is the quality of pre-education. Did you think about it? The quality of education from grade 1 to grade 7, grade 7 to is it grade 12, and in these social institutions, did you address that? 
Are you happy with the quality of education you encountered in lower level, grade one to seven, grade seven to 12, grade beyond that? Uh, did you focus on that? If you didn't, please focus on that and help me advocate for quality education. So that is what I was calling for. I was not saying that this scrap free education. And, and then, you know, when I talk about quality education, it can uh, divert to the, those who train the media, media practitioners, because the media practitioner is supposed to be learning for truth all the time. And no one is challenging them to say, where did he say this? In what context did he say this? Can I have a, 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 you know, a voice bite or whatever you call it, or a video clip to show that the man said, I will do away with free education. So I began at that point questioning the quality of education in the media fraternity, those who train journalists. Are you sure this is the quality of education a journalist would say, I'm happy with it? Yeah. If I was a journalist, the first thing I would say was, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did that man say that? Where did he say that? Was there any media professional present? Give me a footage. Uh, give me a recording and so on. And then we'd go through it and then I'd say, yeah, I think by implication he said this. So then let's take him on. Or if you're not clear, you say, President Lungu, or they want to call me former president. Former president Lungu, what was president, was president, no worry. So, <laughs> so they would say, President Lungu, what did you mean when you said this? Isn't that elaborate? Then when I make myself clear, then you would say, this is what the gentleman said, let's talk about it. And then you can begin now tearing me apart and the heading, head, headlines and so on and so forth. But the quality of education, of course, does not end up with the journalists. It ends up with lawyers, it ends up with doctors, it ends up with the engineers. Why do we have washed out bridges every so often? It's because of the quality of education we're offering in the engineering sector. And if we offer quality education in that area, who we'll have people of integrity who will be able to do professional work which will last, which will save people money. And so for your research, I think that you should have gone a bit further. Well, I hope you did go further to look at the quality of education in instances which can be categorized as professionals. Uh, lawyers, are they getting good education? Are we getting good lawyers? Quality education. Uh, if they're paying fees, are the fees worth it? If it's free education, does it mean we should just sacrifice and say it's free education, therefore we should bring out... Uh, if I go to a university which is privately funded, the quality of education will be revealed in the workmanship, the skills that I'll have. It is, goes the same if I go to a public institution and I bring out, uh, uh, I, don't want, I don't know what word to use, I bring out an wholesome performance. People will say, I'd rather have graduates from this institution working for me than graduates from that institution. You begin now uh, bringing down the quality of education, you begin now despising that institution, and people begin saying, I'd rather send my child to a public school or a private school because what I'm seeing is worth it and so on. So in a research like this, I think he, he, I know that you haven't had time to go into detail to give me what your findings are, but I thought I should take advantage of this opportunity to just clarify that quality education should be quality education. If it's free, the government should spend more for the free education that people are able to equal the expectations of the syllabus and at the end of the day produce quality citizens who will be able to deliver as a medical doctor, as a medical doctor for whether you're coming from uh, Levi Manawasa, you're coming from any other medical institution in the country. If you're a lawyer, you're going to produce quality legal services whether you're coming from a private university or a public university and so on. So all I say, I can say is uh, thank you very much for this and I don't want to take away. If the problem is if I talk, no matter what you say, they will, will trash everything and say, Edgar Lungo said this. But I hope that the media will pick what you said. Because what you said is very important. It is what has provoked me to say what I've said. So if only we can listen to you, because we cannot govern and run schools and universities without you successfully, probably we can be better. So media guys, please ensure that you give headline to these people, not Lung again, Lung again. <laughs> OK. So thank you so much. Unless the additions you wish to make, what we did for ourselves, we have been able to evaluate. I know that we were there up to 2021. Our friends have been there from 2021 to now. And you should be able to compare and contrast. And it's so contrasting, you'll be able to help those who are in power, what they can do better. Without even necessarily having to beat our drum and say, oh, guys, the previous guys did better, because that is what they don't want to hear. They don't want to hear that. So. 
you wish to say something? What of thanks? <laughs> yeah. Unless you have to say you have to say something. The report must be very lengthy. I would like to have a copy. Can you help me get a copy of the full report once it is released and so on? It will help us. But the quality education should be quality education, right? And then students should participate. I agree with you. But whether that should be legislated, I don't know. Whether that should be just a custom in the institution we belong to. Some universities do it out of custom. Some schools do it out of goodwill for the parents have insisted. But others probably have it in the regulations. Dean of students and all these things begin mingling and then you have quality senates and so on. So thank you so much. <laughs>